let's talk about pure substances and property tables. A substance that has a fixed chemical composition is called a pure substance. That doesn't mean it has to be a single chemical element. For example, water is a pure substance. As long as chemical elements are homogeneous, it's considered a pure substance. So air is a mixture of different gases, but it's still considered a pure substance because it has a uniform chemical composition. Even ice and water together is still a pure substance because the chemical composition of all the phases is the same. Now if we had water and oil together, it's not a pure substance because oil is insoluble in water and so we will get two different regions. Phases of pure substances should be familiar to you. The principal phases are solid, liquid, and gas. Phases can change from one form to another, and this process is related to pressure and temperature. Using water as an example, let's go through the basics. Imagine we have a container like this, filled with water. On top, we place a sealing metal piece like this. Right now, the temperature of the water is 25 degrees Celsius and the pressure is one standard atmosphere. At this point, the water is in a liquid phase, and it's called a compressed liquid. All it means is that this water is not about to vaporize. Now we start adding heat, and the temperature starts to rise. The liquid slightly expands, and the metal piece moves up a bit. The pressure doesn't change because it's based on the barometric pressure and the weight of the metal piece. When the temperature reaches 100 degrees Celsius, the liquid is now called a saturated liquid. That means the liquid is about to vaporize. Once the water starts to boil, the temperature will no longer rise. It will only start to rise after all the water is completely vaporized. As long as we hold the pressure at a constant level, the temperature will remain constant during the entire phase change. At the halfway point of this change, the amount of liquid water and vapor is equal. A mixture of liquid and vapor is called a saturated liquid vapor mixture. Eventually, the whole container will be filled with only vapor. If there is a heat loss at this point, some of the vapor will condense back to a liquid that is called a saturated vapor. In other words, that's a vapor that's about to condense. If we keep transferring heat, the temperature and specific volume will increase. As long as the temperature doesn't drop below 100 degrees Celsius, condensation won't occur. A vapor that is not about to condense is called a superheated vapor. Now let's talk about saturation temperature and saturation pressure. Let's go back to our previous example with the water. The water boiled at 100 degrees Celsius when the pressure was one standard atmosphere. If, however, we added weight on top of the metal piece like this until the pressure goes up to 600 kilopascals, then what would happen to the boiling temperature? The water will boil at 158.83 degrees Celsius. So keep in mind that the boiling temperature is dependent on the pressure. As long as the pressure is held constant, the boiling temperature will stay constant. If we change the pressure to different amounts, the temperature at which a pure substance changes phases is called the saturation temperature. The opposite of this is when we change the temperature and a pure substance changes phases at a specific pressure. This pressure is called saturation pressure. These values are listed on tables for different pure substances. They are called property tables. If we look at this table next to pressure, we see these values. These tell us the specific volume of a saturated liquid or the specific volume of a saturated vapor. If we wanted to find the difference between the two, we can write it like this. The subscript F is used for saturated liquids and G is used for saturated vapors. Moving to the right, we see another set of values called internal energy. These values tell us the internal energy at different phases. Right after that, we have enthalpy. If we sum the internal energy of a system and its pressure multiplied by the volume, we get enthalpy. The letter H is used to represent it. It has the unit's kilojoules, but if we write it per unit mass, also called specific enthalpy, it has the unit's kilojoules per kilogram. When we do examples, we will go over how to use this table. Now remember how we talked about vaporization? During that process, we get a mixture of liquid and vapor. For some problems, we need to figure out the proportion of liquid to the vapor in the mixture. That proportion is called quality, and it's represented with the letter X. In simple terms, it's the ratio of the mass of the vapor to the total mass of the mixture. The total mass can be written like this. 
quality can have values between 0 and 1. If we have a quality of 1, then it's a system that has only saturated vapor, and a quality of 0 means it's a system that has only saturated liquid. We can go a bit further by considering volume occupied by a saturated liquid and saturated vapor. The total volume can be written like this. Using quality, we can find the average volume. Here, this part is the difference between saturated vapor volume and saturated liquid volume. If we isolate this equation for quality, we can write it like this. Just as we did with volume, we can find the average internal energy and enthalpy using these equations. We have two more topics to discuss, which is how to figure out if a substance is a superheated vapor or a compressed liquid. In the case of superheated vapors, you can keep an eye out for these characterizations. For example, the first one is lower pressures. So if you're given a specific temperature and pressure, and the pressure given is less than the saturated pressure at that temperature, then it's a superheated vapor. Don't worry, it'll be easier to understand this when we do examples. The tables for superheated vapors look like this. Now for compressed liquids, the characterizations are these. In the case of compressed liquids, you treat it as a saturated liquid at the given temperature. So you end up looking at the temperature tables to find the properties you need. In addition to the tables given in textbooks, I've listed some websites that can be used to find these properties quickly simply by plugging in temperatures or pressures. So please take a look at the description. Now let's go through some examples to see how we can apply what we learned. In this problem, we have to complete the table for water. Let's look at the first row. We're given the temperature and specific volume and we need to find the pressure. So that means we need to look at the temperature table for water. We see that at 140 degrees Celsius, the pressure would be 361.3 kilopascals. We also see that our specific volume is greater than the saturated liquid specific volume but less than the saturated vapor specific volume. That means this is a saturated mixture since it's between the two values. Now for the second row. We see that we're given the pressure and told that this is a saturated liquid. So first, let's find the temperature. For that, we can use the pressure table for water. We see that at a pressure of 550 kilopascals, the temperature would be 155.46 degrees Celsius. Remember that this is a saturated liquid so we need to look at the saturated liquid specific volume, which is right here. Let's fill that in. Next, the third row. We're given the temperature and pressure. I'm going to look at the pressure table for saturated water. We see that at 750 kilopascals, the saturated temperature is 167.75 degrees Celsius. But notice, our temperature is less than the saturated temperature. That means this is a compressed liquid. When it comes to compressed liquids, we treat it as a saturated liquid at the given temperature. So let's take a look at the temperature table. At 125 degrees Celsius, our saturated liquid specific volume is right here. So let's fill it in. Now the last row. We're given the specific volume and the temperature. If we look at the temperature table, forgetting the fact that it doesn't go up to 500 degrees Celsius, and we look for the saturated vapor specific volume, we see that at 0.14 cubic meters per kilogram, the temperature should be 195 degrees Celsius, which means we need to look at the superheated water table. We look to see a temperature of 500 degrees Celsius and a specific volume of 0.14 cubic meters per kilogram. This value here is the closest, so that means the pressure is 2.5 megapascals or 2,500 kilopascals. Let's take a look at this problem where we have to find the specific enthalpy of R134A. First, we will write down what we know. The container has a volume of 9 cubic meters. It's filled with 300 kilograms of R134A and the temperature is 10 degrees Celsius. Our first goal is to figure out the specific volume with the given volume and mass. So we just need to divide the volume by mass to get the specific volume. Now that we have the specific volume, we can look at the temperature table for R134A. We see that at 10 degrees Celsius, our specific volume falls between the saturated liquid and saturated vapor specific volume. That means this is a mixture of liquid and vapor. So what we need to do is figure out the quality. Remember, that's the ratio of the mass of the vapor to the total mass of the mixture. It can be found using this equation. On top, we have the specific volume we found in the previous step, and the saturated liquid specific volume can be found from the table. For the bottom, remember it's the difference between saturated vapor and saturated liquid specific volume. Let's solve. 
Now that we have the quality, we can use this equation to figure out the enthalpy. Using the property table, we can fill in what we know. So first, we have the saturated liquid enthalpy, and then we have the quality x we found in the previous step, and lastly, we have the evaporation enthalpy. Let's solve, and that's our answer. Let's take a look at this question, where we have a 5 cm deep pan with water. The water boils at 98 degrees Celsius. We also have another pan filled with water, and it's 40 cm deep. We need to figure out at what temperature the water in the 40 cm pan will boil. So let's write down what we know. The boiling temperature is 98 degrees Celsius in the first pan, and although not given, the density of water is 1000 kg per cubic meter. First, let's figure out the pressure at the bottom of the 5 cm pan. For that, we need to look at the temperature table for water, and we see that it will be 94.391 kPa. So what we found is the pressure at the bottom of the 5 cm pan. Now we need to find the pressure at the bottom of the 40 cm pan. How can we do that? One way would be to figure out the pressure difference between the 5 cm and the 40 cm pan. Then we just add that value to the value we found with the 5 cm pan. In other words, the pressure at the bottom of the 40 cm pan is equal to the pressure of the 5 cm pan plus the pressure due to the extra 35 cm of height. To find the pressure difference, we can use this equation. The density of water is 1000 kg per cubic meter, the acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared, and the height difference is 0.35 meters. We also need a unity conversion ratio since we want our answer in kilopascals. Let's solve. Now we just add this value to the pressure we found for the 5 cm pan. This is the pressure at the bottom of the 40 cm pan. All that's left for us to do is use a saturated water pressure table to figure out the temperature. We get 98.99 degrees Celsius, and that's our answer. Let's take a look at one last example. Here we have 1.4 kilograms of liquid water in a tank, and we need to figure out a bunch of different values. So first, let's write down what we know. We have 1.4 kilograms of water, and the temperature is 200 degrees Celsius. Using the given temperature, we can figure out the specific volume for a saturated liquid. Keep in mind, we're told that initially 25% of the tank is water, the rest is air, and then heat is continually supplied until the tank contains saturated vapor only. For the first part, we need to figure out the volume of the tank. Before heat is applied, the tank has saturated liquid and air, so we need to figure out the volume taken up by the liquid. For that, we need to multiply the mass by the specific volume of the saturated liquid. Let's plug in what we know. Solving gives us the volume of the water, but remember, only 25%, in other words, a quarter of the tank, is occupied by water. So if we multiply our answer by 4, we get the full tank volume. For the second part, we need to find the final temperature and pressure. Now that we know the volume of the tank, we just need to divide it by the mass to figure out the specific volume. What we found is the saturated vapor specific volume. Remember at this point, due to heat, the tank only contains saturated vapor. So using this value, all we need to do is look at our temperature table to find the temperature and pressure. You will need to extrapolate the data to get a value close enough or use the resources I listed below in the description. For the last part, we need to find the internal energy change of the water. So first, let's find the internal energy at 200 degrees Celsius. Remember, at this temperature, it's still a saturated liquid. Now we need to find the internal energy at 371.26 degrees Celsius. At this point, it's a saturated vapor. Since we have both, we can figure out the internal energy change by using the internal energy equation. The mass is 1.4 kilograms, and we just plug in our internal energy values. Solving gives us our answer. I hope this helped you gain a better understanding of how to use property tables. Thanks for watching and best of luck with your studies.